Dear people watching and listening, Assalamu alaikum. Kindly like and share this video with your friends and family and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please support my channel by contributing to my Patreon account so that I can continue making the audiobook series. Is the Bible God's Word? Start of Chapter 7 The Acid Test How do we know that a book claimed to be from God is really the book of God? One of the tests, out of many such tests, is that a message emanating from an omniscient being must be consistent with itself. It ought to be free from all discrepancies and contradictions. This is exactly what the Last Testament the Book of God says, Afala yatadabbarun al-Qur'an Do they not consider the Qur'an with care? Walau kana min indi ghayri Allah Had it been from any other than Allah, lawajadu fihi ikhtilafan kathira They would have found therein many a discrepancy. Holy Qur'an, Surah Nisa, Chapter 4, Verse 82 God or the Devil? If God Almighty wants us to verify the authenticity of his book, the Holy Qur'an, with this acid test, why should we not apply the very same test to any other book claiming to be from him? We do not want to bamboozle anybody with words as the Christians have been doing. It would be readily agreed from the references I have given from Christian scholars that they have been proving to us that the Bible is not the word of God yet making us believe that they have actually convinced us to the contrary. A classic example of this sickness was in evidence again only yesterday. The Anglican Synod was in session in Grahamstown. The Most Reverend Bill Burnett, the Archbishop, was preaching to his flock. He created a confusion in his Anglican community, an erudite Englishman addressing a group of learned English priests and bishops in their own mother tongue, English, which his learned colleagues drastically misunderstood to such an extent that Mr. Macmillan, perhaps also an Anglican, the editor of an English daily, the Natal Mercury, dated December 11, 1979, had this to say about the confusion the Archbishop had created among his own learned clergy. Archbishop Burnett's remarks at the Synod were hardly a model of clarity and were widely and dramatically misinterpreted by many of those present. There is nothing wrong with English as a language, but we know that the Christian is trained in muddled thinking in all matters religious. The bread in his holy communion is not bread, but flesh. The wine is blood, three is one, and human is divine. But do not make a mistake, he is not that simple when it comes to dealing with the earthly kingdom, where he is then most precise. You will have to be doubly careful when entering into a contract with him. He can have you sold out without your realizing it. The examples that I shall furnish in substantiating the points I have raised about the contradiction in the so-called Book of God would be found very easy even for a child to follow and understand. While the author of Samuel 24 above makes God the boss of the situation, the author of Chronicles gives credit to the devil. Apart from showing allegiance to God as is noted elsewhere, the devil, Satan, is also given his due. This dichotomy on the part of the author of Chronicles reminds one of the story of the old woman who lit one candle to St. Michael and another to the devil, so that whether she went to heaven or hell, she would have a friend. This chronicle's fellow made sure that he had a friend at court above as well as a friend at court below. He wanted to have it both ways or wanted to have his cake and eat it too. You will observe that the authors of the books of Chronicles and of Samuel are telling us the same story about David taking a census of the Jews. 
where did David get his inspiration to do this novel deed? The author of 2 Samuel, chapter 24, verse 1, says that it was the Lord God who moved, RSV incited, David. But the author of 1 Chronicles, chapter 21, verse 1, says that it was Satan who provoked David to do such a dastardly thing. How could the Almighty God have been the source of these contradictory inspirations? Is it God or is it Satan? And which religion is the devil synonymous with God? I am not talking about Satanism, a recent fungus growth of Christianity, in which ex-Christians worship the devil. Christianity has been most prolific in spawning isms, atheism, communism, fascism, totalitarianism, Nazism, Mormonism, Moonism, Christian Scientism, and now Satanism. What else will Christianity give birth to? The Holy Bible lends itself to all kinds of contradictory interpretations. This is the Christian boast. Some claim, and rightly so, that biblical passages have been continuously misused and misappropriated to justify almost every evil known to man. From the plain truth, an American-based Christian journal under the heading, The Bible, World's Most Controversial Book. July 1975. Who are the real authors? As further evidence will be adduced from Samuel and Chronicles, I deem it advisable first to determine their authors instead of ascribing those books' incongruities to God. The revisers of the RSV say A. Samuel, author unknown, just one word. B. Chronicles, Author unknown, probably collected and edited by Ezra. We must admire the humility of these biblical scholars, but their possiblies, probablys, and likelies are always construed as actualies by their fleeced sheep. Why make poor Ezra or Isaiah the scapegoats for these anonymous writers? What did the Lord decree? Three years famine or seven years famine? If God is the author of every single word, comma, and full stop in the Bible, as the Christians claim, then is he the author of the above-mentioned discrepancy as well? 3 or 7 Compare both the quotations 2 Samuel chapter 24 verse 13 tells us, So God came to David and told him and said unto him, These words are repeated word for word in 1 Chronicles. Chapter 21, verse 11, except the redundant, and told him, is removed. But while trimming the useless phrase, the author also pruned the time factor from seven years to three years. What did God say to God? Three or seven years plague on both your houses? 8 or 18. Compare the two quotations. 2 Chronicles, chapter 36, verse 9 tells us that Jehoiachin was eight years old when he began to reign, while 2 Kings chapter 24 verse 8 says that he was 18 when he began to reign. The unknown author of Kings must have reasoned that what possible evil could a child of eight do to deserve his abdication? So he generously added 10 years to make Jehoiachin mature enough to become liable to God's wrath. However, he had to balance his tampering, so he cut short his reign by 10 days. Add 10 years to age and deduct 10 days from rule? Could God Almighty say two widely differing things on the same subject? How old was Jehoiachin? 8 or 18? Between 8 and 18 years. There is a gap or difference of a full 10 years. Can we say, God forbid, that the all-knowing Almighty could not count? and thus did not know the difference between 8 and 18? If we are to believe in the Bible as the word of God, then the dignity and status of the Lord Almighty will hit an all-time low. Cavalry or Infantry Compare the two quotations. How many chariot riders did David slay? 700 or 7,000? And further, did he slay 40,000 horsemen or 40,000 footmen? 
the implication in the conflicting records between 2 Samuel chapter 10 verse 18 and 1 Chronicles chapter 19 verse 18 is not only that God could not discern the difference between hundreds and thousands, but that he could not even distinguish cavalry from infantry. It is obvious that blasphemy masquerades in the Christian dictionary as inspiration. Practical Homework Solomon in his glory began building a royal palace for himself, which took him thirteen years. We learn this from the first book of Kings, chapter 7. You remember Dr. Parker's boast about whole pages being taken up by obscure names? Well, for sheer puerility, you cannot beat this chapter 7 and Ezekiel chapter 5. You owe it to yourself to read it just once in your lifetime. After that, you will really appreciate the Holy Quran. Obtain your own Bible and color code it for easy reference. You may color the various references from this booklet in your Bible yellow for all contradictions, red for pornographic passages, and green for sensible, acceptable quotations as the ones I have mentioned at the beginning of this essay. That is words that you can effortlessly recognize as being those of God and his holy messengers. With just this preparation, you will be ready to confute and confuse any missionary or Bible scholar that comes your way. If we perspire more in times of peace, we will bleed less in times of war. Chiang Kai shek. How hygienic! Note that the author of 1 Kings, chapter 7, verse 26, has counted 2,000 baths in Solomon's palace. But the author of 2 Chronicles, chapter 4, verse 5, increases the kingly count by 50% to 3,000. What extravagance and error in the book of God! Even if God Almighty had nothing else to do, would he occupy himself inspiring such trivial contradictory nonsense to the Jews? Is the Bible God's book? Is it the word of God? Piled Contradictions Before I conclude this series of contradictions, let me give you just one more example. There are hundreds of others in the Bible. It is Solomon again. He really does things in a big way. The ex-Shah of Iran was a nursery kid by comparison. The author of 2 Chronicles chapter 9 verse 25 gave Solomon 1,000 more stalls of horses than the number of bats he had given him. And Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses. But the author of 1 Kings chapter 4 verse 26 had real kingly thoughts about his royal patron. He multiplied Solomon's stalls by 1,000%, from 4,000 to 40,000 stalls of horses. Before some glib evangelist draws the wool over your eyes that the difference is only a knot, a zero, that some scribe or copyist had inadvertently added a zero to 4,000 to make 40,000. Let me tell you that the Jews in the time of Solomon knew nothing about the zero. It was the Arabs who introduced the zero to the Middle East and to European countries later. The Jews spelt out their figures in words in their literary works and did not write them in numerals. Our question is, who was the real author of this staggering discrepancy of 36,000? Was it God or man? You will find these references and many more allied facts in a very comprehensive book, The Bible, Word of God or Word of Man, by A.S.K. Jumel. End of chapter 7